God bless you. The Lord has a word for you to protect you and your kids. He wants to protect you from media, things that you might even discerned weren't so good for you. But God is talking in plain language, plain speech to teach us how to protect and guard our gates. There is a scheme of the evil one to try and infiltrate your life, infiltrate your soul through media, things that the rest of the world is doing. The Lord is showing us that this is an agenda of the enemy and it's on God's agenda to set us free from this stuff where we have been, frankly, in fellowship with demons. Many of us have been in fellowship with demons and the Lord has shown me. And so I'm going to share this with you. But first, let me give you this scripture to uh, give us something to stand on as we get into the dream of the Lord from the Lord in just a minute. So 1 Timothy 6 and verse 10 says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Wow. So we see that the love of money is the root of systems in the earth and that many will leave their faith because they have a greediness. There's a part of them that has a passion and a desire and a craving for these systems and what they offer. And then they step away from their faith to eat from these systems and they pierce themselves with many sorrows. So there's sorrow, there is pain, there is loss, there is a cost that comes from stepping out of our faith and we get drawn out of our faith by systems and by, by industries that are built on the love of money. It's not money that's the problem. It's the love of money. So things that are produced due to a love of money are, are producing fruit. And when we eat of that fruit and it enters into our soul, it brings sorrow. Oh my God, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and do not add sorrow. So God says he blesses you. He gives you wealth. He edifies you. Not because you love the wealth, but because you love him. And he says he doesn't add sorrow to it. And so there's things that the enemy tries to pervert and give you an alternative and give you a counterfeit version of what God has for you. And you're thinking you're okay because you're saved. But actually, as a disciple of Christ, you're being held to a higher standard, held to walk in the ways of God. And so we should be doing what Jesus would do. Amen, somebody. So let me tell you this dream from the Lord and how God has shown me the agenda of Satan and how we've been taking the bait, frankly, and how we've allowed our kids to take the bait. So in this dream, I was in a hotel room and I was talking to a young lady and I knew that I was a part of this group. It was a rap group and we had had a concert that night and I was asking the young lady as we were just sitting there, how much money did we make? So the, the focus was money. The focus of this band, this group was about making money. And I said, how much money did we make? She says we made about $60,000. And I said, oh wow, there's 10 of us. So you do the math, that means $600,000 was brought in that particular night for one concert, one single concert, $600,000. And, and then I said, well, that doesn't make sense because you told me that the revenue from the concert was $4 million. Are you hearing this? All the money flowing for these concerts. And I don't think it's literal, but I think the Lord was just showing me that there is money being raked in through concerts. And there's a message even beyond that, because as I'm talking to her, I see her, her, her pleasure in it, her desire to stay in this industry because of the money. There was no joy. There was no happiness. It was just, yeah, we made the money. Like, it was all about the money. And the money wasn't satisfying her, but because it was a lot, she thought she was basically doing the best that was available to her. She wasn't free. She wasn't even smiling. It was just money to her. There was no joy in the money. And so look, there's a message there. But I knew I was part of this group, and I knew that this group was a rap group because earlier in our conversation with this lady, I said to her, that one of our bandmates had died, and this was a person who in the natural uh, sense really has died, and I know what band they're part of, what group they're part of. It's a hip-hop group. And so all of this money's flowing. And so I was, I was sitting with the Lord and praying, okay, God, why'd you show me this dream? And one thing I want to make sure I get to is the number 10. So 10 is something that I actually prophesied into that number with regard to the uh, year 2024. And 10 is a number of order, but it doesn't necessarily represent divine order or apostolic order. It doesn't, it's not order that brings the kingdom of God. 10 is a number of order or natural order. Uh, 10 commandments, glory to God. Uh, 10 plagues. And so when we see 10, often we see it's the Lord 
bringing order into a chaotic world. He's trying to bring order to a chaotic world. But we know even from Scripture, the Ten Commandments, the law was made weak by our carnal desires, by our sin. And it was only through grace and truth through Jesus Christ that we could be saved. And so there's a limit to the order that we see with the number 10. It doesn't bring redemption. It doesn't redeem. It doesn't bring us cleansing, but it does bring a semblance of order. And so this group of 10, they are operating in order, just like it says when Jesus uh, speaks about why the disciples uh, were they, he was being criticized for casting out demons and by the spirit of Beelzebub, he says, you can't see a kingdom divided stand. He was talking about how even the kingdom of Satan has order. There's an order. And in this season, the kingdom of, of, of Satan, the kingdom of darkness is ordering and reordering as the kingdom of God is growing and advancing. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And what I'm getting at is the enemy is forming stronger allegiances, stronger bonds with people through the love of money to promulgate and proliferate messages that are demonically inspired to you and your children. And it, the new vehicle is through media transported state to state in concert. So now I'm not just watching it. And this is what the Spirit of the Lord is revealing to me at this moment. Now I'm not just watching it. Now I'm coming in person to drink and eat at a table that is demonically set. Come on, somebody. So I'm going to give you some historical context here. And this is not criticism. It's what the Spirit of God has revealed to me. You have seen videos of people in the 80s and the 90s at Michael Jackson concerts. And the brother just steps out on the, onto the stage and he does not speak. And he might turn his head to the side and stand there with his aviator glasses on. And he's just standing there. And he'll stand there for five minutes. And five minutes of silence is a long time. It feels like an eternity. And the, the young ladies and the young men are screaming and some of them faint. They fall unconscious. There's a physical response to the to the presence of this artist. Why? Because I've been drinking of his message. I, I, I worship him. I sit at his table and I repeat his words in my head. Instead of singing psalms, hymns, and, and, and spiritual songs, making melody in my heart to the Lord, I have a song in my spirit that is demonically inspired. Listen, I'm not here to debate about the, the, the foundations of Michael Jackson's music. I'm not saying it all is demonic. I don't even need to get into that. What I'm saying is... It's not the kingdom of light. And so we can condition our souls to eat from the wrong table. And God keeps saying for me to tell you, guard your gates. We're in the year of the door in the Hebrew year that we have stepped into uh, in September. And God's saying, guard your doors, guard your eye gate, guard your ear gate, guard your mouth gate, guard your, your nose gate. What you smell represents what you worship. Because remember, we present a sweet smelling savor to the Lord. And so we're lifting up worship and he's receiving us and there's fellowship. What are you in fellowship with? What is, what is it that you're receiving uh, by the spirit in the spirit realm into your soul that is bringing you satisfaction, that is bringing you a feeling, that is bringing you an experience? And some of us, you know, we don't want to be accused of being religious. Most of us are making that excuse because we just don't want to be holy. We don't want to be set apart. We don't want to be sanctified for God. But listen, Let's start this new year and with a with a clean slate and let's go after hard, uh, go after the Lord hard with a seeking spirit and discern in our hearts where we need to repent, turn, change and make a new decision and let our minds be renewed. Glory to God, because the Bible says, do not be conformed with this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. God is a God of transformation. Jesus is a savior of transformation. Jesus didn't just come to save you. Jesus came to save you and change you. He came to transform you. In him is life. This life is in his son. That's the word of God. He says <laughs> that in him is abundant life. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life. I came to transform you from a place where you thought you had life 
in this world and bring you into the real life that is only in me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Where we think we can find life outside of Christ, we've been deceived. So we don't want to be called Jesus freak. We don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to be the person at the party that doesn't drink the cocktail. We don't want to be the person that doesn't watch certain TV shows. We don't want to be accused. We don't even want to talk about Jesus. We don't want people to ask us, well, why are you doing that? We don't want to be criticized by our children. We don't want our children to say, well, our, our friends are doing it. And, and, you, and you don't want to be the, the mom or the dad that says you can't go. You can't go to that concert. My mom wouldn't let me go to some concerts as a kid. And I thought she was just absolutely out of her mind. I did not understand. But as a as an adult now, I'm grateful. And it was I mean, it was like tectonic plates were shifting in my life when I was told I couldn't go to certain things. I couldn't go to certain um, uh, kid nightclubs. They had kids nights clubs back then. And, and I couldn't go. Never got in there. And, it, and they, my mom just didn't feel the, the comfort. And I, and I was like, but but everyone's doing it. That is not an excuse, y'all. Do not be conformed to this world, period. That's what the word of God says. Do not be conformed to this world. I'm going to read this scripture about the prof, prof, um, promulgating and the proliferation of things and how it's fellowship with demons. But let me first tell you, the Lord is showing us that because of all the money that can be made, they've been watching the Beyonce concert tour they watched how much taylor swift brought in and they're going to roll out these tours more and more because people love being in person hearing and sitting under the messages that are coming forth and i'm not just talking about concerts it could be movies y'all we've got to be careful and we've got to guard our gates we've got to keep our kids gates protected not just through prayer but practice teaching them how to test spirits to see if they are of God. See, we don't want to get into this stuff because it seems so religious, but it's in the scriptures for a reason. It's for our manual. It's for our life to be full and abundant in Christ. And we've been taking shorts. We've been taking less. God is not pleased. And God is not pleased because you're not walking in the fullness of what he, he paid for. He paid the price for you. You've been bought with a price, said the, says the word of God. It says, glorify God in your body and your spirit because they are both his. You were bought with a price. Glory to the Lord. The price God paid by his only begotten son was for your body and your spirit. Come on. The Bible says that uh, your body was made for the Lord and the Lord was made for the body, for your body. So when Jesus came, he didn't just come to redeem you. He came also to give life to your mortal body. The Bible says, God is just giving me such wonderful scriptures. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body. Oh, God, healing in your body. God wants all of you, not just your spirit. He wants your soul, body, and your spirit. And he wants your body to be a vessel of the Holy Spirit. We're going to get to that in just a little bit, in fact. Be careful because when these concerts roll out, there's going to be a lot of temptation to go buy the ticket. Man, do you hear how Ticketmaster broke? They couldn't sell the tickets adequately and efficiently because of the rush to get the tickets. And let me tell you something. The love of money was involved because I bet you there was a ton of the people rushing to get those tickets who were there to buy them, to resell them. Bots. People have literally designed uh, bots and artificial intelligence and programs to, to go into these uh, ticket sale events and try to steal or buy as many tickets as they can while they're sitting there drinking a latte. They've designed code that will go and buy them as many tickets as possible so they can resell them. It's all about the love of money and it's all about the enemy using our craving for money, using our craving for the carnal to put his message into our soul. Guard your gates, says the Lord. Listen to what it says in the book of Ephesians and chapter five. It says, and have no fellowship. That means zero fellowship. It doesn't mean just a little bit because I just don't want to be so radical for Christ. No, it says zero. It says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. 
tell your friends about it when they ask you if you're going to go to the Taylor Swift concert. Tell them, say, no, actually, the spirit of the Lord will let me go because, uh, you know, her message is not from the Lord and I'm guarding my gates and I'm not going to let my kids gates be uh, prof um, proliferated or 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 um, taken advantage of with these messages. I'm not going to let it happen. Verse 12, it says, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So here's what Paul is saying. He's saying when there is unfruitful works of darkness, then there's stuff happening behind the scenes that is so shameful. We shouldn't even talk about it. He's guaranteeing it. So let me give you an example. When you, when you think about some of the rap stars and they talk about what they do when they record and they, they want to get inspired to write their lyrics. A lot of times they talk about they're doing drugs. So when you do drugs, you're opening yourself to a demonic spirit. You are you are opening yourself to breathe in and experience something that it does not come from God. It's an, it's a fellowship with darkness. That's why people that do drugs experience dark things. They experience dark behavior. They experience perverted messages. People go into alternative states of consciousness. It's it's demonic. It's a gate. It, it's a gate that uses your body to bring access to your soul. Mm. We don't have time to get into that. But my point is this, that as a three chambered person, body, soul, spirit, you need to guard your gate because the gate is your body. And your gate is supposed to protect your soul from receiving of certain things. But the things that these these artists, whether it's music or people that produce or write uh, movies, many of them, if they're not glorifying the Lord, they have lifestyles that are perverse, that are unfruitful. And so their fruit bears what they do in secret. What, who are they sleeping with at night? How many of them are there? What genders are they? What kind of parties do they attend? Come on, somebody. Are they doing orgies? Listen, these are the things Paul talked about in the scriptures, that he heard that there were orgies. This is stuff that's not new. And do you think that what's going on behind the scenes is not something worse than what Paul wrote about? Of course, it's at least as bad. It didn't get better. And so we hear about Harvey Weinstein and the sexual assault stuff. It's, it's, it's in the fruit of what we watch, the behavior of the casting couch is infused in Hollywood's message. That's why it's so sensual. The movies are sensual. The horror flicks are dark and disgusting. They're getting more and more perverse. They're getting more and more anti-Christ nuns that are being demonically uh, possessed in movies. Come on. They, they, they show in the uh, poltergeist, they show in these movies, which I don't watch, but I've seen them way back. The ones that I remember watching, they would actually make light of how the priest was ineffective against the demonic. Whose message is that? They, they would have uh, the demonic spirits try to lustfully tempt the priest and make the priest look weak because that's what the people who wrote the movie believe because they've been drinking from the wrong well they've been sitting at the wrong altar they have been inhabited by demonic spirits their minds are not renewed in christ and so their thinking is perverse the bible says you can be carnally minded and it leads to death or spiritually minded and it leads to life so the mind that is carnal brings death and we eat the dead stuff when we watch it and listen to it. God's trying to protect you and your family. I'm telling you, this is on the heart of God. It's on his agenda to refine you, to keep you, to protect you, to guard you, to guide you, to keep you out of traps and snares. Glory to God. Moving on with the scriptures, it says, it's, it's shameful even to speak of those things which are done of them by, in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. So God wants you to put light to things. That means put the word to it. That means seek the Lord. It means that when light exposes it, that you don't keep walking into it. We need to know his will and we need to stay in him. Verse 14 goes on to say, Ephesians 5, Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So come out of this slumber. Come out of this 
unconscious state where you're not sensitive to what's going on in the spirit realm and and arise from the dead and take on the resurrection power that's within you live in the light and then Christ will give you light he'll give you a flashlight to inspect that which has been put before you to eat and say nope this thing is tainted this thing's rotten this thing has worms in it glory to God would you eat fruit with worms in it would you eat fruit that is decaying come on this stuff doesn't have life in it it's dying Come on. Then it says in verse 15, listen to this. So then that, so see then that you walk circumspectly. Look around, be aware, not as fools, but as wise, foolish people. Just watch what they want. Listen to what they want. Take their kids to certain concerts and think it doesn't matter. We're different. We're going to walk into the concert and we're not going to be affected. Lie. You're listening to it. And so now your mind, when you're on your way home, is replaying that song and it's not thinking about Jesus. And instead of hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is singing to your spirit, you're, you're listening to, to songs that are making fun of other artists, that are misogynistic, they talk about murder. I mean, think about it. The songs that talk about murder, how blatant is it? And we just think the stuff's normal and we repeat it. We go to church Sunday. I'll never forget, I saw a brother of mine, he was riding with his kids, listening to rap music from, from back in the day. And just because it's old school, they think it's safer. No, it's, it's just not as bold as they are now. It's the same demonic spirit, but just like with any Anything the enemy introduces, he introduces it little by little so that so sin becomes normal at a certain level. And then he introduces another level of sin. And because you're caught in a certain level of sin, that next level doesn't seem oh so bad. He rolls it out slowly, which is why the enemy would not be allowed in the wilderness. The Lord would kill people. Because they were carrying demonic agendas and he did not want it to proliferate. He let an entire generation die because they just could not honor the Lord. They couldn't and he would not allow it into the promised land because the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And see, we don't understand the end game. The end game is God redeeming us from sin. He doesn't want anything of darkness in you none he's light and there's no darkness in him and he says you you are the light of the world so we don't see revival we don't see awakening because we're walking in darkness we're not surrendered and it's okay it's not like i'm not here criticizing i'm just saying god is bringing us into another level of holiness he's bringing us to another level of sanctification there's a process by which he cleanses us with that fuller soap and he gets into us and washes us he says walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise and then he says redeeming the time because the days are evil we're living in evil days Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do we stop and say, before we buy the tickets, is this the will of the Lord? Beyonce had an alter ego called Sa Sasha Fierce. I don't know much about her, but I, I, I get the idea from what I have seen, uh, which I don't remember what I did see. But what I remember about it is it seemed like it was dark. It was fierce. It was angry. It was not, not humble, not gentle not loving. And so we're telling our young ladies that's how to be a strong woman. Is promoting sexuality as a as a strength, as a gift. Sexuality is a way that you are to, supposed to minister to your husband, minister to your wife. As a metaphorical representation of the love between Christ and his church, it's not about you being fulfilled or fulfilling another person. It's about you preaching gospel by how you serve the one who you're in yoke with in consecration and sanctification in covenant. And so we cheapen the word of God. We cheapen the experience God has for us. We're going to get into experience in just a second. And so we need to know the will of the Lord is instead of saying, oh, it's not that bad. Well, the demon that's inspiring these artists is inspiring them to wear clothes that don't cover their bodies. So then your kids watch it and say, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to go to Forever 21 or wherever, and I'm going to buy that. They put on clothes that are risque and suggestive. They sing songs about it. They touch themselves. They have their dancers rub on them. 
So then there's there's no accountability because this is not my husband. I'm going to let this man rub on me. And so we like that because that's our dream. That's our craving. We want to be able to have those kinds of experiences with no accountability. And so when we see the people we admire do it, it seems to give us permission to do it. Oh, they're rich and famous and they can do it. So that means I can do this and still be blessed, quote unquote. Lies. Pride is all in the music. Pride. Ego. And we let our kids watch it and listen to it. And then we love it when the artist gets a Grammy and they say, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, first of all, he might be your Savior, but he's not your Lord because your songs have nothing to do with him. Oh, you have one song among the 18 on your album that you call gospel. But the other 17 songs are about you putting your body in bed with a man or, or doing drugs or shooting somebody and taking their life, a child of God, putting your body, the vessel of the Holy Spirit. As, as somebody else's rag doll. And, and we, we, we drink this stuff. And guys, I'm, I'm not here to criticize. I'm telling you what the, what the Lord is telling me to tell you. We've got to come higher. Know what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine. Don't crave the world's wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the Spirit. Listen, God wants to fill you, but we don't realize that we're not getting filled because we're filling ourselves with other stuff and there's no room for more of God. Where God is not occupying your life, something else is. I'm going to say that again. Where God is not occupying your life, something else is. That means there's an idol there. And if you are your own idol and you think you know better than God, for what your kids should listen to, you're not full of the Holy Ghost. No, you can speak in tongues, you can lay hands on the sick, but you're not filled because you are walking in idolatry. I'm not here to criticize. I'm just saying these things because we need to hear the truth of God. This is where we are. This is the time we're in. We're in the post-COVID world where God is shaking the whole earth to shake out of us the demonic and bring us into holiness, bring us into sanctification. Sanctify the Lord Jesus in your heart, says the word of God. We need to operate in spiritual wisdom and avoid fellowship with darkness. That first verse, verse 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So darkness has fruit. It's not going to help you. And we eat from it when we have fellowship with darkness. You're eating something. You're eating it. So that means you're not guarding your gate and you're bringing it into your life. Watch this. The word fellowship in, the, in Merriam-Webster's online dictionary means four things in terms of synonyms. Fellowship speaks of companionship. It speaks of partnership. It speaks of membership and it speaks of association. So then when I am involved in, in eating demonically inspired media to stay on our topic today, I am in companionship with that demon. I am in partnership with that demon. I am in membership with that demon in darkness. And I am now in association with darkness. Now, that doesn't mean you're not saved. But it means that in your walk with the Lord, you have dark darkness in your life. So Jesus said that you can be full of darkness. Ooh. He says the light of the body is the eye. And if, if there's darkness, he says, how great is that darkness? If there's darkness in your eye, meaning your vision, your, your perception, if you aren't sensitive in the Holy Spirit and you're not able to, to determine when you've been conformed to this world and you're, you're not transformed, renewed in your mind, and, and you're seeing things and craving them and you want them, it means there's darkness in you. The, the, the way your eye works is actually indicative of what's going on in your soul. Your soul has a passion and a craving for dark things, and you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to dig that stuff out. But God is going to do it. I'm just going to speak that into your life. God's going to do it. So the definition in Webster's Online Dictionary says that fellowship is community of interest. So you're sharing interest in communion with the enemy when you're listening to Taylor Swift and Beyonce. So if you're wondering if I'm saying if their music is demonically inspired, yes, I am. I'm saying that flat out. And not, not just them. It's gosh, guys, it's it's a lot of people, a whole lot of people. Some of these rap songs are literally depressing when you listen to them. I haven't heard them uh, lately, but I remember there was a brother who died some years ago and he was a rapper. And I, I was just so hurt about him dying because he was so young. 
and I, I played like 10 seconds of his song and that stuff was so dark and so depressive. It sounded like a person that wanted to kill themselves. A person's committed suicide. And so what I'm saying is, just like it said in the scriptures, it's a shame to speak of the things that are done by these people in secret. What they're doing in secret is what they're bringing into their product. They're just softening it because they don't want you to know the fullness of what they do because they're ashamed and they know it's, it's bad. And they know that mom and dad won't let you buy it. Some moms and dads won't. And so in the, in the seeking the money, remember the love of money is at the root of this. I've got to soften the message. I can't give you so much darkness. But see, the level of darkness that we now endure and we will now, um, that we will now tolerate is growing. And so now, you know, we got all kinds of agendas that are in the music. And then if you say something is not of God, now it's more and more popular to say, oh, that's hate speech. <laughs> Listen, God is trying to prepare you and your children. If we partake of wickedness in any of its forms, including media, we are forming a partnership, a companionship, and an association with that behavior. So the things that they're rapping about and singing about, the things you're seeing in the movie, you're actually in association with it. And you're in association with, companionship with, and partnership with that demonic spirit. It's a spirit. We become members of a fellowship that we should not be involved with. We have no business being in the membership with. So we have to break away from these bonds. Worldliness, y'all, is not a right or a privilege. It's a prison. Bible says, do not be conformed with this world. Do not. Just like the word we just read said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And prior to that, Paul said that we should be living sacrifices. He says, I plead with you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, so that you may prove what is good, perfect. I'm telling you, we aren't seeing people getting saved because we're not presenting ourselves as living sacrifices of the Lord. And so we're not proving, we're not presenting, we're not giving evidence of the abundant life in Christ that will cause people to hunger and thirst after righteousness. We're not salty enough to see the breakthrough anointing breaking out in America. We're seeing it in pockets. We're seeing, but, but, but if you're one of those people that pray for revival, pray for yourself to be revived. Pray for yourself to repent. Do not allow your kids to go to these concerts. Do not allow your kids to listen to just anything. Educate your kids. What I mean is teach them the voice of the Lord. Teach them the word of the Lord. Teach them to pray. Teach them to minister to the Lord. And think of the unseen things that the artists that they want to listen to are doing and what spirits those artists, artists are entertaining. I mean, some of the tattoos that they have just look like demonic tattoos. And so they're, they're bold now because we don't have, we're so dull in our spiritual discernment. We're letting these people show us the, the, the proof and the signs of their demonic fellowship. And we don't care. Black lipstick. Oh, we're fine. Let the kids listen to it. I'm telling y'all, listen, <laughs> it used to be dark metal and, you know, it was kind of fringe. Well, the stuff from dark metal now sounds a lot like hip hop. Hip hop sounds a lot like dark metal. The same kind of chords, the same kind of dirge, the same kind of rhythms. That stuff's entering into the status quo. The mainstream is darker than it's ever been. And God's heart is to protect you and your kids. Think of the dark stuff they do. Some of these people literally are in fellowship with demons and they know. I was thinking about this yesterday as um, maybe this is why I had this dream. I was thinking about the, the group called Three Six Mafia. They literally in their name are mocking God. We are the Three Six Mafia. We are associated with the Antichrist. We are an Antichrist demonic membership. And when you listen to their music, and I listened to it 20 years ago, I can tell you, they were into the demonic. They were so dark and bold with it. And people started eating it up. And they were fringe at first because they were so, I mean, they talked of sacrifices and stuff. And, and then they came into the mainstream because they softened their uh, message a little bit. And then they got dark again. 
I mean, one of them usually literally had fangs. He put gold fangs in his mouth. So, so the demonic spirit that was, that was on him was inspiring him to look like, to literally take on the characteristics of a demon. Fangs are, are given to meat eaters that, that rip through the flesh of live animals. You don't have to cook something when you have fangs. And so this thing is demonic. It's about death. It's about killing. It's about mauling things that were alive. And, and, and we don't have the discernment that we need to have, y'all. We do not belong with demons. And the word of the Lord to you today is break free. Isaiah 52, 11, listen to this. It says, depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. That's the word of the Lord to you today. Depart. Repent and turn. Just turn and say, I'm not going back. And when the temptation is there, say, I'm not going back to my own vomit like a dog. I'm not a dog. I'm a child of the Lord. Come on, somebody. I'm not a pig. I'm a child of God. I'm not returning to the mud. I'm a child of the Lord. Everything I need is in my father's house and my children are going to know it too. They might want to do this and that. And I'm going to say, no, we're not going to do that. Let's come up with something else we can do because God's not pleased with that. And we need to be well pleasing to the Lord. Did you know he sent his only begotten son so that he could be your sacrifice? He gave his life for you, poured out his blood for you. And right now sits on the right hand of the father, making intercession for you. He wants you to be his and, and he is yours. And he wants you to minister to him. He wants to minister to you. He wants you to experience the glory of his presence. He wants you to experience the joy that is unspeakable. He is the one who can give you life and only him. Use it as an opportunity to preach to your kids, minister to them through relationship. Let your life be preached to them, your love for Jesus. You're not listening to it. You're not watching it. You're sitting with the Lord, ministering to the Lord. You're doing things that are well-pleasing to the Lord, bringing relationship, tighter relationships in your family by doing things together instead of watching crazy stuff. And calling it your guilty pleasure. I bind that demonic lie in the name of Jesus. That lying spirit that tells you it's okay to have a guilty pleasure. I rebuke that spirit in the name of the Lord. The lying spirit shut your mouth in Jesus' name. Because the word of God says, depart, depart. Anytime God says something twice, he's saying, this is my will and it will be done. You will depart. Go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Get out of the midst of these people. Come out from among them and be separate, says God. And then he says, be clean. That means I've cleansed you. Walk in who you are. You who bear the vessels of the Lord. Do you understand God literally wants your, his spirit in you to be poured out everywhere you go? But you're not on fire because you're not letting him burn in your life. You're not letting him burn the fat. You're not letting him burn the things that you need to bring to the altar. Bring stuff to the altar that he can burn and you'll be on fire for Christ. Guard your gates and guard your house. Guard the gates of your house. Don't play this stuff in your house. Demonic spirits running through your house trying to literally inhabit you. They're trying to influence you. They're trying to whisper to you and, in, and invoke behavior, provoke behavior that is not well-pleasing to God against your spouse, against your kids. Trying to make you afraid. A lot of folks have mental health issues because they watch things that those demonic spirits are messaging to them. Fear, death, suicide, not safety and love. Some folks, if they would just fast and pray and turn off the TV and the, and the radio and begin to minister to the Lord, will be set free from this stuff. But they, they have fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. They're sitting at tables eating demonically inspired fruit. So let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the dream. Thank you for the message. That means you've given the grace for us to receive the manifestation of the victory that you have for us through giving us the truth. You said we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. God, I pray that over you. I pray that over you now in Jesus' name. I pray that over your people, Lord, that they will be made free by the truth. God, I pray that we will burn brightly as torches of the Lord, lamps of God, because we're giving you something to burn, because you're worth it. God, give us a fresh revelation of your beauty, of your value, of your love, of your closeness and your nearness. God, I pray we call upon you and we seek the will of the Lord. What is your will? That we will let light manifest 
and expose the unfruitful works of darkness and that we won't even allow some of the things that are done in secret to influence our children and influence our lives. In Jesus' name, I speak revival into your heart now. I speak a new hunger and a thirst after righteousness that you will be filled and that uh, the things that have been taking up space in your soul will be exhumed and they will be removed in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. God, use a spiritual backhoe, hallelujah, and dig out any and all things, the silt and the sand, the dud and the dirt and the mud that, that has been in our hearts, that has taken up space because we've been dealing with stuff that we had no business dealing with. I pray we guard our gates and we repent now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you want to sow into this ministry, you can go to faithfireworldwide.com and click support. Uh, we are donor supported. 100 uh, percent. I'll be in Guatemala at the end of the month ministering and um, revivals in a crusade, uh, partnering with my brother Steve Fado there. And we're invited to go all over the world and we, we are in need of monthly partners. And so if you would care to do that, you can do that at faithfireworldwide.com. We also have a link tree where you can see a whole lot of our products, the uh, prophetic words, uh, the events, and uh, you can give there as well. Link tree slash faithfire. You can also sign up for our newsletter there or on our website, faithfireworldwide.com. And we do have text alerts. If you text the word faithfire to 55498, 55498 is the number, and then text faithfire, one word, uh, you'll be added to our text alerts. And we'd praise God for you. We hope you like and share this uh, so that we can continue to minister to you what we believe the Lord is saying to his people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May, he, may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. That is my declaration of you in Jesus' name. And we'll see you soon. Farewell.